Okay, so it seems that it's already live. Um, welcome everyone um, to our third session of the second seminar series on innovation systems in honor of Chris Freeman. Uh, this is an initiative which was initiated by a, a group of young scholars for young scholars. Um, so really, this is something very unique uh, that we encounter today, where we have a focus on young researchers. Our idea is to see and to honor Chris Freeman, who would have turned 100 this year, uh, which is why this seminar series is called uh, Chris Freeman Centenary Lecture Series. We already had a first um, seminar series, Innovation Systems 101, where we talked about uh, theoretical aspects of innovation systems. The second series where we are today uh, in our third session is trying to see how the theory on innovation systems is applied in practice. And since we know that early career researchers oftentimes encounter difficulties in applying theory to practice, we made a call uh, to early career researchers to talk about their research and tell us how they succeeded in doing so. So today what we are going to see are two presentations, one by Claudia Lorena Sanchez Solis and another one by Duigo Saros. Go Sarosoglu. I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Uh, in both and both works are going to be commented by uh, early career researchers uh, Danilo Spinola and Natalia Gras and by senior researchers Franco Malerva and Mamo Muji. I thank you all for being present today and of course I think uh, as well all of you who are attending this research seminar uh, the idea is that we will have the presentation of Claudia. It's going to be commented by Natalia, Franco and Mamo. Then we have the presentation of Duigo and it's going to be uh, commented by Danilo, Franco and Mamo. And uh, that will leave us time at the end to have uh, questions from the public and initiate discussions that may go beyond what uh, our commenters have to say uh, with regard to the research that's going to present it. So thank you very much again, all of you. And uh, I would ask you now, Claudia, uh, to present your research. Please remember that you have about 20 minutes uh, for your presentation. Please go ahead. Okay, um, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, I don't know if you can see my screen. It's okay? Yes, yes, yes we okay. can see it. Thank, thank you. you very much. Um, good morning and good afternoon to all. I'm Claudia Sanchez. And uh, I am very glad to be here. It's such an honor to be presenting a bit of our work in this session in presence of important academics of innovation studies. Thank you very much to all for being here. Uh, in this opportunity, I, I will present an article that we are working on at the Universidad Mayor de San Simón in Cochabamba, Bolivia. We will surely continue improving this work after this session but in general terms, we adapted the technological innovation systems approach to address the technology of isolated hybrid microgrids in Bolivia through a sequential analytical model. <clears throat> this work is carried out uh, within the framework of the scientific master in innovation and development in collaboration with the program of uh, innovation and technology transfer headed by Carlos Acevedo with whom we are actively involved in LALIX and GlobalX activities and also with the Energy Research Center which is a new center of knowledge production within a public university in Bolivia which wants to establish an um, a strategic guidelines to enhance its role in society and promote inclusive and sustainable development. This is the outline of the presentation. And getting into the subject, um, Bolivia is a country with one of the smallest economies in South America, and it has shown a stable growth in recent years. It has a very complex geography and 
To get an idea, Bolivia has the same population as Belgium, but 30 times more territory. Also, the potential for generating energy through renewable sources is extremely high. However, uh, electrification of the total population has not yet been achieved. By 2018, coverage was estimated at 93% of total coverage and 78% of coverage in rural areas. The national goal is to achieve total electrification by 2025 and also to export large amounts of electricity to neighbor countries. The map shows that there are uh, municipalities or cities with a low level of electricity coverage, such as those in red, um, whose coverage is less than 50%. Mainly rural communities or remote communities are the ones that still don't have access to electricity. The provision of electricity in Bolivia is possible thanks to two types of systems. The national interconnected system, uh, which connects the main cities in eight of the nine departments of Bolivia and the isolated systems, uh, which supply Northern Bolivia and also communities far from the main cities throughout the country. As shown in this graph, the participation of renewable energies, including solar and wind is still very small in the national interconnected system, while in the isolated system, the participation is higher. So um, in this context, isolated systems acquire great importance when talking about universal access, since they can reach the most um, remote communities of the national territory that uh, still don't have electricity. So it is clear that access to energy has proved to have a strong links with several dimensions of socioeconomic development, such as uh, family economy, health, uh, educational habits, and social networks. The technology of um, isolated hybrid microgrids can offer quality energy to promote the development of this rural and remote communities. However, it has experienced a very slow diffusion in Bolivia. Um, therefore, we believe that exploring dynamic, the dynamics of diffusion of this new technology will help us to understand this phenomenon and in the best case to identify strategic guidelines to promote it. Um, in the following, we will refer to this technology as HMG. Therefore, uh, we wonder how does the technological innovation system of isolated hybrid microgrids work in Bolivia and what are the systemic problems that hinder its development? At a general level, it has been shown that the innovation systems approach is very useful to study technology diffusion processes. Among all the dimensions of innovation systems that are related, we adapted the dimension of technological innovation systems, TIS, as the central theory of this work. Um, TIS are social technical systems focused on the development, diffusion, and use of a particular technology. In the literature, um, a structural approach to TIS has been developed uh, that considers actors, institutions, and networks as components of the systems. But since innovation processes have a dynamic nature, this approach has been complemented with a functional approach. So um, these structural components must fulfill a series of uh, functions within the system to uh, promote uh, the diffusion of uh, technology. So these functions are um, entrepreneurial activities, uh, knowledge diffusion, guidance of search, market formation, uh, resource mobilization, and creation of legitimacy. In a recent study, Edson reveals the functional approach and proposes a broader approach for developing countries. Um, also, TIS uh, literature mostly refers to problems that hinder the development of innovation systems as systemic problems or failures or weaknesses. 
uh, these uh, block specific functions and therefore hinder the building of the systems. Regarding the methodological approach, um, in order to explore the functioning of the PIS of the HMG, a sequential analytical model was proposed by Arosena and Suits to address uh, development problems. Um, this model was uh, adopted. It combines a descriptive dimension with a prescriptive dimension. The sequential analytical model consists of four approaches um, to know a process and act rationally in its context with um, ethical inspiration and uh, practical intention. So these approaches are uh, the factual, normative, prospective, and propositional. In this way, the, the model uh, for student development problems seems to represent a useful tool to guide us uh, in the analysis of the TIS and in a very orderly manner and at a, give, at a given time. So um, the first stage addresses the question, what is happening and why? In this stage, we address the innovation characteristics, actors, networks, and landscape factors. The second, uh, what does it work for? The values that inspire the diffusion of hybrid microgrids technology are identified here, as well as the national institutions, regulations, expectation standards, or instruments that uh, accompany these uh, values and influence the development of the sector. And um, third, what could happen and why? Here, the trends and ongoing changes in the diffusion of this technology are identified. So to achieve this, we distinguish between market trends, or the organizational trends, um, technological trends uh, of uh, existing projects. So at least one, uh, for example, the last one uh, is um, answer the question, what to do? It is important to note that the uh, first Three stages help to analyze structural features or structural components of the system. And in the last one, we focus in the functions and specifically the systemic problems to be potentially transformed in strategic elements for the future. So we assumed that, um, we assumed the idea that concrete policy proposals should be based on some way of combining an interpretation of facts and trends with a choice of ends. To do this, we, we, we our main uh, information uh, sources were uh, documental review and semi-structured interviews. And um, a brief summary of the findings, of pre preliminary findings. Um, regarding the first approach, the factual approach, the this technology has been implemented in Bolivia for the first time in 2015. It consists of a combination of solar panels, diesel engines, and batteries to provide quality electricity to remote communities. So there are currently four systems installed, uh, benefiting around um, 1,300 families in Eastern Bolivia. We can see here the four systems that uh, currently are functioning in Bolivia. And they are here in these places. So um, the actors involved in the implementation of these four projects were identified, including governmental actors, national and international private companies, international cooperation agencies, uh, public companies and the communities. And also the relationships uh, between, uh, the, between them were also identified where it became very evident that uh, public universities or knowledge producing entities were not involved. Um, the next, uh, the, the, the 
third stage, um, well, from all the SDGs that we know, access to energy, which is the goal number seven, has proved to have a strong wings with uh, socioeconomic development. In, in this context, uh, global energy consumption is expected to grow uh, by 55% between 2005 and 2030 at a global level, and three-folds of this increase is projected to occur in developing countries. So in addition, achieving this universal access to electricity is an, um, is an objective contemplated in several national documents and plans. But however, uh, the formulation of institution with a greater degree of specificity for this technology is still needed. Regarding the third approach, uh, the prospective approach, um, four plants have been installed in the last six years and a couple of systems are still in study stage since 2015. Um, there are currently 34 isolated systems operating with just with diesel generators and they may, may be um, susceptible to a technological change by adding renewable generation sources. Uh, depending on the distance they are from the grid and the characteristics of the population that make the system uh, profitable to operate. So likewise, um, recent studies suggest that HNGs will play an important role in achieving universal access in Bolivia uh, with the possibility of electrifying around 72,000 uh, inhabitants in remote areas of Bolivia. So regarding the implemented system, the, the implemented systems that we have, um, it has been observed that it is very common for the design and sizing studies of the plants to be carried out by uh, international entities, as well as the fi uh, financing in some cases was shared and in other assumed directly by international cooperation. Um, here we can observe uh, as a product from the fourth and last approach. Um, here we can observe the systemic problems identified and classified according uh, to the functions that are affected. So a brief summary shows that many of the problems have to do with the absence of official channels of communication between actors, the absence of actors themselves, such as the university, the local public university, and um, the limited presence of actors in the implementation process, such as uh, the people from the communities uh, that need electricity. So likewise, it, it is still considered that the initial investment for this type of project is very expensive. So the business actor should be strengthened and institutions should be specific institutions shall be promoted to alleviate these economical effects. So um, these problems can be addressed by formulating appropriate strategies and policies at an early stage uh, of uh, the innovation system building. And to achieve this, it is um, necessary to, to have methods to support such formulation through the systemic uh, collection and analysis of information. And that tackling these systemic problems must be the goal of future strategies and measures adopted by stakeholders. Um, some concluding remarks. Uh, the adopted model allows the determination of the strategic elements to the uh, uh, identification of systemic problems. Uh, through the process of identifying systemic problems, our analysis managed to reveal how the innovation system of HMGs for rural electrification works. So there is a strong evidence that it is in a very early stage of growth. Um, tracking systemic problems or blocking mechanisms translates into a strategic um, elements for policymakers and other actors. It is important to recognize that the institutions and policies needed to promote the diffusion of this technology will depend on other dimensions of innovation systems, such as um, the sectoral and regional and national levels. Uh, so finally, um, such an analysis, as, uh, this analysis is based on current knowledge and 
is therefore by no means a finished product, only through a, system, only through a systematic uh, learning process we can improve um, our understanding of the opportunities and limitations of um, innovation systems analysis and policy making. So uh, further work is required to land on a well-established method, but therefore further empirical applications of the model are recommended. Um, well, in the most challenging part of this work was um, Definitely the absence of data, which is very, a very common problem in Bolivia, making it uh, difficult to follow um, the process over time and consequently to make decisions, which is um, in the worst cases can take a very political direction. Uh, another challenge is um, to be able to establish indicators that adapt to the context of study. For example, in the case of developing countries to find indicators that um, not only measure the production of knowledge, but also the construction of absorptive capacities, or to be able to identify informal channels of communication or lobbying between actors that may be quite specific to the context. Anyways, um, my advice uh, for aspiring researchers in the Global South uh, is uh, to get involved in this kind of activities and discussions, especially those uh, taking place in the context of Globalix or Lalix. I believe uh, that these spaces can offer greater richness when dealing with specific uh, cases in each context or in each country. Um, another, device, uh, another uh, advice is um, so whether um, it's, it's to be always open to work in interdiscipline, uh, to better understand the innovation processes in all their um, complexity. And uh, with this, uh, I conclude the presentation and thank you very much. No, thank you so much, Claudia, uh, for your wonderful and very insightful presentation, particularly as we had mentioned at the very beginning, insights, uh, pitfalls and learnings with respect to doing uh, research, applied research. Your paper is now going to be uh, commented first by Natalia Gras, uh, who holds a PhD in social science from the Universidad Autónoma Metropolitana in Mexico, and uh, who is currently adjunct professor at the academic unit of the Research Council of uh, the Universidad de la República in Uruguay. She is an active uh, uh, member of Globalix and Lalix, and has studied the national innovation systems approach uh, under various aspects. Uh, Natalia, thank you very much for uh, accepting the inv uh, invitation to comment on Claudia's work. Uh, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. First, good afternoon, good morning for everybody. Uh, Claudia, thank you very much for your presentation and for sharing your work. I enjoy uh, reading it. It is a relevant paper for the theory and practice, in particular for the STI policy design and implementation. I found uh, very interesting the integration of ideas coming from technological innovation system approach complemented with the perspe perspective on functions and its contextualization to the case of Bolivia, considering the specific characteristics associated with the weakness of demand for knowledge and innovation, and innovation typical of developing countries. In this sense, the research uh, result can contribute both to the theory on technological innovation system and to inclusive innovation and also uh, innovation system for inclusive development. So congratulations. It is also relevant to practice in particular because uh, of the originality uh, of the application of the sequential uh, analytical approach to identify the systemic problems associated with the technological innovation system of insulate, insulated hybrid microgrids, 
to address uh, the lack of access to electricity, in particular because its result could provide specific policy orientations to overcome the identified systemic problems. That say uh, from either, uh, from reader, uh, reading sorry from reading your paper I was uh, left with some question about the cho choice of a theoretical approach theoretical approach first what were uh, the reasons or the rationale for selecting the technology technological innovation system approach rather than technological transition approach or multi-level perspective. What advantage does the select approach have for the study in relation to the technological transition approach? I did not find in the paper a justification in that sense, but perhaps it is worth incorporating the discussion that underlines the choice the choice you make for technological innovation system. In particular, because according to the synthesis of the of result that you present, you mentioned that the systemic problems identified identify, uh, are of an institutional and coordination nature, in addition to the absence of academic actors and the weakness uh, of relationship between the actors. You also say that the development of the system depends uh, on local capabilities and strongly on government decisions and uh, energy transition policies. In that sense, perhaps <coughs> gives a multi-level and technological transition approach can, provo can provide a relevant dimension of, of analysis for the empirical evidence uh, you have. Uh, so thank you very much. So that is my my question. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Natalia. Uh, I would suggest, Claudia, uh, that maybe we collect first the comments also from uh, Franco and from Mamu, and then you uh, have some time to answer them. I would like to remind all of the other attendants that we will have a discussion uh, um, um, part where you all can pose your questions after the presentation of uh, the two works. So I would now like to ask uh, Franco Malerba to comment on the paper. Uh, Franco has a PhD in economics from Yale University and he is currently working at the uh, Bocconi University in Italy. And I think that most of us know him uh, for his work on um, on innovation systems. He's editor of various international uh, journals and we are very happy to have you here today uh, and to comment on Claudia's paper. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Thank you, Jana. Uh, uh, and uh, Claudia, I enjoyed very much uh, uh, your paper and your presentation because I think it uh, goes into uh, in depth uh, in one of the various uh, dimensions of uh, innovation system, the technological innovation system that is as important as the national, the sectoral, and, and the local or regional one. And also uh, your link uh, between uh, uh, the system and the problems, because you know, in a sense, linking uh, 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 innovation system with the problem solving uh, part of trying to identify and to correct and therefore uh, for the role of, of, of policy. Uh, I also like uh, uh, your choice of the sequential analytical model. Let me tell you why. Because <laughs> a lot of times we researchers focus on uh, the analytical part of an innovation system. Could be national, could be sectoral, or could be regional, uh, and then uh, we go to the policy, policy implications, policy aspects, and so on. While the sequential analytical uh, model, uh, I think the way I see you applied, uh, and I'm looking also at the Aracosena and Sutsa 
uh, original uh, paper is try to link uh, uh, the uh, descriptive and analytical part with uh, the problems and the policies. So in a sense, it tries to, to make them together and not uh, having some parts uh, of uh, the analysis more important and then eventually move uh, to the policies later on. So I think it's a very good choice uh, because they put uh, uh, all of them, uh, all of them together. I have some, uh, some general comments. I think uh, this paper is excellent for the topics uh, of the series, the practical applications uh, of innovation system. And what you're examining is uh, the emergence of technical of, of a technical innovation system, which brings in uh, the dynamic aspect that is the evolution of, 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 of the system. And I think you find uh, in, your, uh, in, in, in your analysis that uh, uh, parts of the systems are missing or some links are not developed, which I think is, is, is a key aspect of, uh, of innovation systems seeing in a dynamic perspective, you know, in a dynamic and evolutionary perspective. So in a sense, uh, both uh, some, uh, um, some element of the system is missing or some links are missing. And then I think, uh, 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 one question that uh, comes uh, from uh, uh, from your analysis is do i do you identify some trigger mechanism to make the system move you you, you talk about institutions relations and so on but uh, in your technological innovation system are there some trigger mechanisms that uh, could be really key for making the system moving from the emergent stage to a more developed stage. I think this, this point of the trigger mechanism uh, early on in the evolution and the emergence of a technical innovations, uh, uh, a technological innovation system is quite important. Uh, the second question is uh, <laughs> uh, a comparative one. You talk about uh, Bolivia, and you talk about uh, a specific, let's say, technology or, or whatever. Is this problem common to other Latin American countries, in a sense, or is something specific uh, to the Bolivian case? I think it's uh, very important, in a sense, uh, identifying whether these are general problems uh, of the emergence uh, of a technical in, uh, technological innovation systems or these problems uh, are very much uh, linked uh, to a specific country or a specific area. Also because this helps you to isolate uh, the policy because uh, the policy has to be uh, very specific related to the national setting or the policies have to be more, more, more general. And the last, uh, uh, the last uh, uh, point, uh, is that uh, you at the end of your uh, presentation uh, says, well, uh, data are missing, uh, indicators are missing, uh, uh, there are problems in that. And I totally share your, uh, your concern because particularly when you go in, uh, in certain setting, data are missing and the researcher faces uh, uh, faces a big, uh, uh, big problems. But I think uh, the problems could be at the same time a great opportunity. And let me explain why, in a sense that existing indicators are a constraint. They are being uh, developed maybe for other purposes. Uh, you use them for trying to uh, um, develop your own reasoning, but they constrain you very much. And of course, if you have time, and if you have some resources, the development of surveys in addition to interviews are really what a researcher should do in this context. When you took a look at the emergent, emergent technological innovation system, a kind of uh, emerging areas and so on, because allows you to develop, let's say, qualitative and quantitative indicator tailored 
to the problems uh, that you're facing. So the, the, the point that I'm making is that uh, you're right that uh, you face problems in indicators and data, but also you, you have the opportunity to break new grounds by, by launching some maybe ad hoc survey. I mean, of course, it requires time, requires resources, but it could be an opportunity also to understand better the emergence uh, of technological innovation systems uh, in, in a specific setting. And this could give uh, very important policy, policy indications. I think uh, uh, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for all these insights and questions and comments uh, for Claudia. As I said, I believe uh, we will have now the comments by Mamu. Then we have a combination of different kinds of insights and comments. And Claudia, you uh, have some time to answer at least partially uh, to these comments. And then we continue with the second presentation. And at the end, we will have time to go back to the discussions that may emerge uh, now. So Mami, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Professor Mamomuchi is currently the uh, SAIRJI uh, Chair in Innovation Studies. I'm sorry if I didn't get that right. And uh, in South Africa, he has a PhD from Columbia University in New York and a postgraduate um, degree in philosophy in science, technology and innovation um, from the University of Sussex in uh, UK. Just as Malerbo, I think uh, to the community uh, of Globalix, he is more than known uh, and he uh, has published lots of stuff on innovation systems as well. And I think he can make some additional uh, comments uh, to Claudia's paper. Mamu, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, I also enjoyed reading uh, the paper uh, on, with the title New Directions for Innovation System Approach uh, Regarding Cross-Sectoral Co-Evolution Based Convergence. Uh, what a big title. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I heard the two commenters. So some of the things I wanted to say, they already have said it. But let me add a few things. Uh, uh, the positive things are I am all with it. It's a very nice paper and it's very interesting. And uh, in the presentation, uh, a lot of the Bolivia, uh, the, especially on the electricity in the rural areas, the way it was uh, presented was very nice and very good. Now, uh, the one thing I want to say is I just want to I identify this idea of technological convergence is very, very interesting. For example, they say the smartphone uh, has integrated a number of uh, technologies, telephone, computer, camera, music player, television, and, 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 and many navigation tools, geolocating, how to locate them and so on. They have done things like that. Now, on the electricity side, on the hybrid grid, we also need to know how to also uh, really bring together, like the smart telephone. Now, it, the, the industry has become so big, it has reached over nearly 400 billion, uh, I, I, I'm told. I, I just have uh, heard like that. What we need is, we still have in the, in the world, everyone should be having electricity, but we don't because we, of the way we, we uh, manage it and we also know how to converge it. Now that we are in this digital technology time, internet of things, artificial intelligence, all right, 3D and printing, many things like that. Is there any chance now that I like to ask Claudia, a way to actually uh, identify how the electricity side, the grid side can also be uh, linked with different and then consolidate it and make it more effective. I think that's extremely important to, to I, I suggest that we should go for something like a, a technology convergence innovation system that actually can co co uh, link together all these separate uh, sources for electricity. We can even combine solar energy and with other different types of energies to outcome. And also we could also not use boundaries like Bolivia, 
separate from different uh, Latin American countries because uh, the sunshine has no boundary and the electricity is boundaryless. So is there any way we could also generate some new ideas about how we can bring together and make it, I show them for policymakers, show through science, through research, through excellent research, how a new approach could be done, which benefits everyone without everyone losing. Something like that would be very good to do. I, I, I like that. The other thing I have well, uh, for uh, Claudia is you have on the methodology side, you have quantitative analysis, but you just have a paragraph on it. You, I, I would like to see your data analysis there. It must be articulated. It, it can't just be simply stating what uh, quantitative analysis you have chosen. And, and at the same time, the same thing you did, how also you use qualitative analysis. There must be some, I know you use mixed methods, which is good, qualitative and quantitative, but it's very, very important I think in the in the paper, if this is going to be published, I prefer that you actually really show the data analysis very, very clearly on each variables that you have selected. Those things have to be articulated. If they are not, I think it would be uh, it would be just uh, just a, a small thing that you have just identified what what the quantitative analysis uh, uh, elements or variables are, but no analysis is done. That has to be completely articulated. Otherwise, it's weak. It, your paper would be seen as weak. Uh, if I have to judge it, I will definitely say something like that. So, uh, and if we have to publish it in our journal, I will say something like that. And the same thing with the the uh, the. And I think that's very interesting. And also on the the the, the conclusion side, on the the real recommendation, and the real contribution, and the real evaluation must be articulated. By that, what I mean is. Uh, it's very, very good in a case like this, where electricity in rural areas, all these things, people still are not having everything that they should be having. In this time when everything is going digital, over 4.5 billion people now are online now. I mean, they, they know how to use mobile phone, things like that. In this particular, if you don't have electricity, you can't use it. So because of that, it's extremely important to also articulate, uh, uh, not just uh, recommend or shown some uh, contributions in a small way, but also the what learning can come out of it. In other words, what policy learning should we really encourage from it? Something like that is what I recommend strongly you do. I think those are the few re remarks I made. I can't repeat what other the, my brother uh, Franco has done and then uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the sister has done. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mamo, as well. Um, I think lots of thought, uh, lots of things for thought, lots of things to discuss. Uh, maybe, uh, Claudia, you answered quickly some elements that were mentioned uh, by the three. Okay, thank you. I will try to answer uh, very quickly. Those um, are very interesting comments. They are very useful for sure to keep uh, improving this work. Uh, the first one about why, why TIS approach. Um, I think this was because um, we are situated in a place uh, that uh, is the uh, public university. So we are working um, from uh, um, energy research center, which is very new. And it has as a, as a main concern and the center wants to know how can uh, to how can help to the university to find a place in the society? So since we are working from a uh, energy research center, uh, we are focusing more in a, from a technological point of view. Uh, so we thought that uh, this work is very useful. Uh, for the innovation program on the university and also for the energy research center program here, because they told me, uh, what can we do as an energy research center in a public university? How can we uh, give some something to, to the society in order to not um, keep in making research that is, is keeping in the, in the, in the clouds, no? And so um, that was uh, one of the, first drivers to, to, to adopt this um, approach, the technological, the technological innovation system. And then um, the key um, 
uh, the, the trigger mechanism for, for um, the technological innovation system uh, building. I think it is uh, the lobbying and the financial support from uh, international agencies. I think it is very important, not only from a technical view, but uh, to the point that, uh, for example, the uh, cooperation has uh, helped a lot to build uh, capabilities to up, uh, knowledge absorption here in the, in the university. For example, uh, in, the, in our research center, the whole researchers and doctors uh, have received this help from um, uh, foreign countries to, keep, to go uh, forward with their studies. So I think this is very important. And the first um, inversions, for example, on these four projects that we have here in Bolivia has been made with uh, international cooperation. So I think this is a very good uh, first step and it uh, is a very uh, key is, is a very uh, key process in the in innovation system building. And then um, um, before we made this work, we, we made a brief uh, literature review on the systemic problems that affect uh, not only here in Bolivia, but in the developing countries or Latin American countries. And I think we found uh, these problems that we found here are very common in all Latin America. For example, the university absence is very common. Um, the um, external inversion dependency is very common also. So yes, uh, we found much between uh, Bolivia and other countries uh, with regards to these questions. And then, um, well, I think energy is a very uh, energy studies and uh, um, this whole uh, sector or green sector specifically from renewable energies gives us give us a very uh, nice opportunity to work um, with inclusion issues and uh, technological convergence, convergence, convergence issues. Because uh, for example, we are now uh, here at the Energy Research Center adopting a concept uh, which is the um, energy sufficiency concept. So we, can, we could see that people giving uh, to communities a solar panel with one uh, bulb and a radio was enough okay, you now have access to electricity. But no, uh, we are thinking now about energy sufficiency because we want to give people uh, what they really need or, or give them um, something that allows them to live uh, a good life. So um, I think uh, this is a first step to uh, see how we can uh, improve the diffusion of new technologies. Um, it's a very interesting um, um, approach, I think. And it, um, in other words, this, this uh, leaves us with a lot of questions that we will um, try to answer in further work. So thank you very much for your comments. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, Professor Mama too, for the comments on the methodology. Uh, Professor Franco, thank you very much. And Natalia, I think uh, these experiences, uh, like these kind of sessions and discussions um, helps us a lot uh, to young scholars to improve their work and to share uh, thoughts between the North and the South and see how we can ground the North discussions to the South discussions. So thank you very much to all and I hope I, answered your questions, but if we can get in touch to keep um, discussing, maybe. Thank you. Yes, and we can also we de uh, dwell deeper into it uh, after um, the presentation of uh, Duigu. As I mentioned, we have a second presentation, which is also going and to be commented. And then uh, we will uh, have some time left and that we can use in order to go into further detail. So I would now- Hello, hello, hello. can I can I send uh, her a written, I have a written uh, sure. feedback. 
Of course, can, can I will. You send me her email? Can, can yes. you send me her email? Because I, I want to send her a very of course. concrete remark. Okay, yes, thanks. we will do that. Thank we so will much. put you yeah. all into uh, contact. Please. Of course. Thank you so uh, much. No, thank you, Mamu, uh, for for your comments. Thank you, Mal uh, Franco, as well, and of course, thank you, Natalia. So we will we'll now pass to Duigo uh, Sara Soglu. I'm sorry if I don't get that correct. Um, with her presentation on new directions for uh, the IS approaches regarding cross-sectoral co-evolution based on convergence. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, please remember the time constraint uh, so that we have a sufficient time at the end. Uh, go ahead, uh, Duigo, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Professor. It's a great pleasure to be a part of such an event with many distinguished scholars. Uh, with this opportunity, our presentation is focusing on a recently completed PhD thesis that we have investigated one of the major trends, convergence, and especially technology convergence, and its effects on sectors, innovation systems, and change of cross-sectoral dynamics in the perspective of innovation system approaches. We are also in the process of making a publication uh, out of our research. Uh, here's the outline uh, of our presentation. First, I'll be focusing on the problem and why there is a need for a concept like uh, cross-sector innovation system approach. Briefly, I'll be explaining our research methods and concepts that we are proposing and key findings from our research. Um, all analyses of uh, recent global trends emphasize the disruptive impact of convergence over sectors, and they put the redefinition of sectors in focus as one of the major megatrends, which uh, occurred in a very accelerating pace. Even though technological disruption is not new, recently it is easily observed that value creation emerged at the intersection of more than one convergent sector. As a result, sectoral boundaries and boundaries of respective innovation systems, whether national, uh, sectoral, technological, are disappearing. Especially technological convergence affects cross-sectoral convergence and the uh, emerging of new dominant sectors with different dynamics. ICT-enabled cross-sectoral convergence might be observed more uh, easily, but convergence affects many traditional sectors as well and creates new dominant sectors, such as uh, agro-food or functional food. Technology convergence also emerges key enabling technologies, CATs, uh, which are disruptive for cross-sectoral transformation and formation of new dominant sectors with different innovation system dynamics. It is foresighted that emerging, disruptive, and convergent technologies will be defined the socioeconomic, scientific, and technological landscape over the next 20 years. Um, since convergence is emerging as one of the most significant and disruptive developments where the dominant sector in the new economy is created by the merge of two or more sectors and distinct structures, uh, the need for a different systemic approach and the research methodology is observed as necessary. Um, current innovation system approaches focus on dynamics of only one dominant sector and uh, mostly major sectors and a uh, coevolution within its own dynamics while paying attention to the links and interdependencies of related or supportive sectors. Thus, the literature is open for improvement to explain cross sectoral dynamics based on the disruptive effect of technology convergence. As a result, our research has two key, uh, key contributions. Uh, there is uh, methodological and the other is theoretical. In relevance or this, uh, of the statement of the problem, we determined our main research question as, in the perspective of innovation system approaches, is there a cross-sector coalition process based on technology convergence? And we also determined two actual research questions, which are what are the gaps in the current innovation system literature to determine the effects of technology convergence over coevolution of more than one dominant sector? And the other one is where are the, what are the advantages of understanding the dynamics that are related to the formation of key enabling technologies based on the conceptualization of cross sectoral coalition? Obviously, uh, we face more than four challenges during our research, but these are uh, worth to be <laughs> emphasized. Uh, most importantly, uh, the research questions themselves involve higher complexity, uh, and the subject is related to more than one literature, not only innovation system literature, but also demand-side innovation policies, convergence, and also global value chains. 
or that the current uh, methods for innovation systems and convergence uh, are applicable or not. All of the literatures are mapped, but they are simplified and included in our research regarding the main context of our research. Later on, developing a proper method for cross-sectoral dynamics over the theory has been a challenge, uh, as well as the implementation and researching the right techniques to gather the related data. Uh, most importantly, there is no such thing as cross-sectoral data, uh, so there has been a process of data sequencing uh, to see if uh, we are on the right way or not. Um, at the end, conceptualization of cross-sector innovation system approach, of course, it is still in the evolving stage, uh, was one of the hardest, even though having the uh, theoretical background and many findings from successful implementation of the method, we used an iterative process to get the most meaningful and comprehensive concept definition. While dealing with challenges, time also uh, presented a great challenge because of the um, popularity and the uh, pace of the subject. So we conducted both a conceptual and an analytical study. First, we carried uh, out a literature review and a descriptive research respectively for determined the theoretical background. Descriptive research also, uh, we used it uh, as an input for the selection of the sectors for the case study, which are automotive and ICT sectors. And the determination, the needs for, and the benefits of cross-sector innovation system approach complementary to current innovation system approach are obtained via comparative analysis and mapping. An analysis method is developed and proposed based on the keyword matching technique applicable by both quantitative and qualitative methods. As a case study, automotive and ICT sectors are cross-sectorally examined using the proposed analyze method based on keyword matching of scientific, patent, and market data for having the reviews of distinguished experts, uh, a qualitative analysis uh, using a structured online ex ex uh, expert survey is also held. Using the findings, a uh, cross-sectoral innovation approach is uh, conceptualized. Organization of the literature review is designed in accordance with the research questions, putting key terms, technology convergence, cross-sectoral coalition, and industry convergence under focus. These terms are investigated in the perspective of all current innovation system approaches. And the comparative mapping study is held for demonstrating the possible benefits of cross-sector innovation system approach. And we use nine criteria, uh, as you can see. Two of the uh, argued uh, inadequacies in the innovation system approach are uh, focusing on the coalition between in institutional innovation and technological innovation, as well as interdependent actors new dynamics, and identifying interdependent um, relationships between different innovation system approach. Also, since our focus is sectors, we paid more attention to uh, sector innovation system approach. And one of the weaknesses faced by uh, sector innovation system approach is stated as knowledge at the base of innovation, uh, innovative activities is changing continuously. This change is affecting the boundaries of sector systems. Uh, also, uh, SAR's uh, literature put emphasis on convergence of ICTs from the perspective of uh, ASEAN's approach focuses broad on the recent use and integration of new technologies in traditional sectors or the presence of bio and nanotechnology in many sectors. It is also emphasized that static and rigid perspectives need to be replaced by frameworks and models that allow observing the change of dynamics. However, there is no definition uh, of a new approach regarding sectors mainly formed and changed by the impact of convergence, especially technology convergence, or to observe the change of dynamics and the current approaches are all accepted. So with our research, we propose to develop, a, a, we propose to uh, develop a method and the concept to observe and measure such dynamics proactively. And uh, you can see the key findings of the literature review. I'd like to emphasize that uh, convergence, especially technology convergence is disrupting the foundation of sectors and dynamics of the respective innovation systems. And from the perspective of uh, sector innovation systems, sectors co-evolve with their institutional uh, environment. Links are complementary are defined between the dominant sector and the related supported sector. And heterogeneity within sector is the key element. Also, the notion is uh, uh, of industry and sector is changing that 
the current paradigm of innovation, especially by the fact development of digital innovation and convergence, proves that the innovation does not occur in a single industry. Also, we investigated that, uh, observed that IS literature and convergent literature are very disintegrated. Uh, also, we investigated demand side innovation policies as a two sided and interactive relation, a technology push dynamic produces uh, radical innovations, which can give rise to entire lean market and uh, societal developments. Also, from the point of key enabling technologies, cross sectoral approaches based on convergence and demand side innovation policies lead to the emergence of CAT while also the emergence of CAT triggers convergence. So there is a mutual and two-sided uh, technology push uh, pull dynamic. Uh, the formation of these sectors and sectoral bodies and sectoral dynamics also are affected from this um, push pull dynamic. So the logic of our and the theoretical background of our uh, proposed concept and method uh, can be demonstrated with this. Uh, for bringing a broader understanding of converging industries and absorbing cross-sector dynamics under convergence, we also conducted a descriptive study. Uh, this study also provided input for the selection of automotive and ICT sectors for the uh, case study. First, we made a bibliometric coherence analysis based on the articles using only uh, converging industries and industry convergence terms and prepared another review from the outcomes. Uh, recent studies present impacts of the digital transformation uh, on innovation across sectors, but there are more converging industries besides horizontal and rather developed sectors, which are also accepted as converging technologies, such as nanotechnology uh, or more recently scientific biology. Uh, from our investigation, one of the recent uh, converging industries come from the cyber physicals, which is convergence of automotive ICTs and also manufacturing. And you can also see other uh, findings. Um, secondly, we use a secondary data from uh, previously held analysis for 15 sectors and applied cross-sector matching analysis. And we determined that even in a sectoral analysis that all sectors are taken separately while excluding convergence effect, uh, automotive and ICT sectors still demonstrate the highest level uh, of matching and uh, converging uh, regarding cross-sectoral perspective. So we uh, selected uh, automotive and ICT sectors uh, for our case study. From the findings of the literature review and partly descriptive study, we developed uh, an analysis method for observing cross-sectoral dynamics. The analysis method consists of two parts, context and methods, using the features of sector innovation system approach, functional dynamics model, demand side innovation policies, and sequential process of convergence. We determined four dimensions and 13 indicators. Color-coded uh, boxes are showing the um, relatedness of the in indicators and the features in the context part. For example, knowledge uh, base is uh, in relevance with the uh, matching of capacity dimension and scientific capacity, technology capacity indicators. Uh, dash colors coded boxes also show the indicators that are indirectly included in the case study. Because in accordance with the research questions, we had to narrow down the analysis method for a better integration of convergence in uh, innovation system approaches. For this, we also investigated current methods for mapping innovation systems and measuring uh, convergence. Therefore, for the case study, we used the cross-sectoral matching analysis method using technology convergence, cross-sectoral coalition, and industry convergence as the main uh, dimensions as we used in the uh, literature review. And uh, we determined a uh, relevant indicator. Considering industry uh, convergence uh, occurs in a sequential process of science, technology, and market convergences, instead of uh, absorbing it uh, using developmental uh, methods, we included science convergence and market convergence as the uh, main dimensions of the method. Uh, therefore, all convergent types are analyzed in cross sectoral perspective. We first conducted quantitative analysis for each of the convergence separately. For science and technology convergences, we conducted a bibliometric analysis based on scientific publications and patent and citations data. For market convergence, we investigate the trends of dominant actors for both sectors, uh, countries, and private sector organizations using their automotive and ICT, cross-sectoral strategies, uh, projects, products, and etc. 
and for getting the reviews of experts, uh, we applied an online expert survey, still using the cross-sectoral matching analysis method. With two obligatory parts, we asked for prioritization of the cats and a prioritization of the convergence type that affects most the cross-sectoral convergence between automotive and ICT sectors. Uh, optionally, we also conducted a selfie questionnaire for getting other statements, but the results match the obligatory part. And uh, for selection of the sectors, uh, we considered the finding from the descriptive study uh, that both sectors are dominant sectors with distinctive features. Both are composed of dominant actors in the global uh, research uh, and development and innovation chain. Uh, both are influenced and influential by the new economic and technological trends, such as convergence or digital transformation. Uh, both can be considered as converging industries separately, uh, suitable and interesting for observing coalition perspective, because uh, it is easily observed that the uh, ICT sector is affecting other sectors, but you also ask if there is a coalition uh, uh, mutually that the automotive also affecting ICT sector. Uh, and for five the- Five minutes uh, left, do we go? Do we go? Uh, five yes. minutes left. Yes. Um, we uh, determined the scope uh, of the sectors uh, separately uh, by using the sub-technology areas and the uh, keyword clusters. Uh, here are the limitations of our study, but uh, I will be taking later. Uh, for the logic of the cross-sectoral metric analysis method, this is the uh, quantitative analysis of science convergence. We use the uh, sub-technology areas and keyword clusters under the uh, sectors and um, use uh, in a bibliometric analysis in a, a matching part. So for the ICT-based auto sector, uh, automotive uh, sector is uh, integrated with uh, all of the 14 sub-technology areas and keyword clusters of those technology uh, areas. And the analysis is conducted as uh, such. And for the same auto-based ICT sector, so uh, we have uh, um, determined chromium sub-technology areas, CATS, uh, based on the publication, uh, publication data. We made co-occurrence mapping analysis, prominent countries and prominent affiliations are also analyzed. Uh, one of the uh, outcomes show from the uh, quantitative analysis of science convergence show that uh, both uh, ICT-based auto sector and the auto-based ICT sector are having the same uh, nodes, uh, electric vehicle nodes as the most prominent uh, top technology areas. Uh, but also we can see that the, during the time there is a shift uh, to uh, ICT related uh, and automotive ICT related technology areas such as vehicle uh, to vehicle or uh, newer energy storage, storage technologies uh, such as vehicle to grid. Uh, according to the examined the top countries and the top five uh, affiliations based on publications and we observed a shift from the uh, knowledge base in both uh, ICT-based auto sector and auto-based ICT sector that, um, for instance, uh, General Motors, Volvo, Volvo take place in top 10 affiliations, but ICT dominant companies such as uh, HITG uh, or ICT specific multidisciplinary universities are also uh, becoming very prominent. And it is the same for automotive-based ICT sector. And here's the regarding the total analysis scores, including all quantitative and qualitative analysis. We also prepared the Sankey direct diagrams. Uh, one of them is relatedness diagram that shows how each sub technology area of ICT based auto sector and auto based sector is affecting each other respectively and how impacted they are in forming and transforming the emerging auto ICT sector. And uh, here are the key findings of our case study. Uh, we observed that disruptive uh, convergence is very disruptive for the basis of sectors, innovation systems, and decreases the threshold of uh, transforming the dynamics of respective uh, innovation systems. I'd like to also emphasize that uh, most significantly, especially for affiliations, as I mentioned uh, earlier, knowledge-based, technology-based, market-based uh, 
uh, show a profound uh, shift uh, between both dominant sectors respectively and sectors do not act as uh, supportive or related sectors as the current uh, uh, sectoral innovation system approach suggests. Dominant actors and their knowledge, technology and market bases are shifting. Uh, boundaries of sectors are becoming blue and all shifts uh, and convergences indicate a coalitional perspective that both sectors are triggering each other's transformation in terms of convergence types. Uh, and unlike sector innovation system approach, uh, cross sector innovation approach uh, shows a homogeneity, uh, homogeneity uh, dynamics. Here is the conceptualization of the cross sector innovation approach. Um, cross sector innovation approach as a concept in terms of examining the cross sectoral, interdependent, and coalitionary relationships between more than one dominant sector that converges together and can alter similar components in national, sectoral, regional, and even wider global innovation systems. And by definition, cross-sector innovation approach is a framework of cross-sectoral distinct institutions whose interactions contribute jointly to the production and innovation processes of more than one convergent dominant uh, sector, which may evolve into a completely new sector. Um, here are the conclusion uh, parts. Uh, while putting the uh, proposed model and the um, concept, uh, we think that cross-sectoral matched analysis method based on subsection JRE and T-word is effective tool as introduced in our research, and we successfully implemented it. There is, of course, room for improvement for proposed um, analyze method and further studies. For example, further analysis might involve indexing and comparison studies, comparing more than two dominant sectors in one country, or comparing developed and developing countries in their context, comparing current sector innovation uh, system dynamics as a whole while implementing convergent effects. And also, um, proposed cross-sector metric analysis method is expected to be applicable for analyzing more than two dominant sectors because one of the key findings is also uh, while analyzing automotive and ICT sectors, we observe that energy, uh, advanced materials and other sectors are also affected and uh, include in the convergence dynamics. So uh, more than uh, two dominant sectors can be analyzed by using this uh, proposed method. Um, Changes in emerging or uh, key enabling technologies and their adoption along uh, GVCs and related sectoral transformations affect the complexity of the innovation system. So integrated perspective with GVC uh, uh, study can uh, broad different uh, perspective. Uh, thirdly, global and national cross-sectoral uh, uh, governance is an uh, important point because uh, also in relation with the point two, Convergence and formation of CATS requires cross-sectoral governance, including the necessity for developing uh, global cross-sectoral standards, collaborations, etc. Cross-sectoral uh, innovation system approach would bring perspective of different actors, both globally and nationally, from different sectors, which are converging. And lastly, and relatedly, a barrier can be emphasized as the lack of cross-sectoral data and access to data issues, which can also be improved by practicing proposed model. Uh, the same issues apply for interdisciplinary areas as well, but in uh, reviewing the multi cross and interdisciplinary research, covert and cross uh, analyses are considered as accurate. Uh, further studies might involve creation of cross sectoral data in collaboration with the sectoral experts and data analysts in larger projects, and results will be very effective for especially uh, technical road mapping and foresight studies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doigo. Uh, very much for your very interesting um, uh, presentation. I would now like to ask, uh, as we did uh, in the case of Claudia, um, for the comment by our junior uh, scholar, uh, Danilo Spinola. Uh, he has a PhD from the Juno Merit University on uh, economics and innovation and is currently a senior lecturer in economics at the Business School of Birmingham City University. He is uh, part, of a board, part of the board, scientific board of Globalix and the vice president of LALIX. Uh, Dan Lilo, uh, thank you very much. And the floor is yours for comments on uh, the presentation by Doigo. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jana. Thank you, Duigo, for your presentation. And I congratulate you for, for the work. I mean, it was a lot of work and a very, very ambitious uh, research that is not only uh, probably a PhD, but a research agenda for, for many, many more years, as I could notice from what you have done. So I congratulate you for the hard work you've done on that. Uh, the version I received was, was your exp ex uh, expanded abstract. So many things that I see in your presentation actually answered some questions I had when I was uh, reading your, your abstract, but I'll try to pose them because one of the main things I was thinking, having on my mind is the fact that the, bar the barriers between sectors are kind of blurry in per se. So then when you analyze this process of co-evolution uh, and of convergence, it can be kind of complicated to analyze exactly what are the barriers between the sectors that create this process of coevolution per se. But then you answered that, saying that actually this is a part of the process that keeps, keeps emerging and, and, and evolving, especially at the current stage. My question for you, and then I think that's that's the thing that I had in my mind the most when I was reading your uh, your work, because you focus on the analysis of coevolution in terms of convergence. But the system is per se, if you're looking at it in a dynamic evolutionary way, it has the, the process of divergence convergence as a dual process that keeps going on that leads to this evolutionary mechanism that makes the, the national system of innovation with this real dynamic uh, characteristic. But then you don't touch it that much on the term of the, uh, divergence. I know it's possible because you focus on convergence, but if you want to see the whole process, the, pr the process of divergence and the process of emergence of new sectors that ends up creating the conditions for the convergence process to occur. Uh, I mean, I I'm not sure, you probably mentioned that in your, in your PhD, but I'd like to hear a bit more what, what you say on that, because otherwise we have a secular process of convergence that would lead to kind of a certain hom homogeneity that we don't have in this evolutionary system. So that's, that's, that's the main question I, I, one of the main questions I had. The second one is that, is actually something that I felt like I, I wanted to see more because you mentioned some of your methodological parts, but I'd like to see in detail what what what, what were all the steps and because it's 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 full of methodological aspects. You do a quantitative, a qualitative analysis, and then we see a lot of like a lot of as, as far as I read in your in our abstract, it was like a, a lot of promises. And then I go straight to the results and I was like, oh my God, I wanna see what is in the middle. And I, want to, I wanted really to see how you, you did every step of the aspect because then we understand a bit better uh, exactly uh, what are the answers, the limitations and the possibilities that your research can can give in terms of the literature, in terms of the of what we have been doing now because I'm, I'm working with, with uh, co-evolution right now. And, and I'm, I'm very interested in that. And I also, I mean, if you've read uh, Silverberg uh, and Verspagen and the technological trajectory and the waves of technological trajectory, it came to my mind a lot, the idea of, in, well, the fact that we are now in a current situation in terms of a industrial revolution. I mean, what, what kind of industrial pattern do we have right now? And if we are like entering this new pattern with industry 4.0, if this is actually a revolution, then this specific moment perhaps is the moment of convergence or it, less, it ends the moment of convergence with the maturity of a previous pattern. And then a new pattern may rise and this new pattern will lead to the emergence of a new sex of a divergence that will end up creating this kind of uh, system with, with, with this increase and decrease in terms of the uh, frequency of, of new technologies that we have in the system. So those are uh, things that I had I had in my mind while reading your uh, reading your your paper. So, in, in terms of the case studies, you, you you select the case studies in which there were convergence. So, if there are other case studies with divergence or with a more like, and the final comment is is on the uh, like it it is very challenging. I can imagine how challenging it was for you to theoretically manage to link all the context of sectoral system of innovation with this idea of coevolution, imagining also that, that we have, I mean, in order to think about that, we have the two sectors that ends up coevoluting. Co but these two sectors are usually very endogenous among themselves when we are thinking about the whole system per se. And then in order to do the analysis and kind of methodologically at least split them in order to observe the process of coevolution, and I can imagine it was quite a challenge. I want to hear from you, Duigo, if you can talk more a bit, how, how you, you theoretically thought about, about this problem and, and managed to 
translate it in your thesis because I know that there are much more information in your thesis that we I couldn't access from just what I read. So that's why I ask you here. And I thought it was really interesting. And uh, thanks for for sharing your your research. And I hope I can read the the final result uh, and perhaps give you some 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 more comments and because definitely gives some insights for the future. And congratulations again. Thank you so much, uh, Danilo. Uh, I would now like to continue as we did before, only switching the order uh, so that Mamu speaks first and then uh, Franco commenting again, uh, uh, commenting also on the paper of Duigo and then uh, give Duigo um, a short time to answer. And we then will come to the uh, discussion section for uh, the entire public. Uh, so Mamu, could you please? Yeah comment yeah i i also really appreciate uh very much uh the presentation uh but i i, I must say to you <laughs> the presentation is different uh, is uh and the paper that i read uh are uh, uh, you know they they are not uh you know what is richer is the presentation and i really enjoy the presentation the the paper is very uh, short. I mean, all the details that are included, all the amazing uh, presentations and all the diagrams, all of them are not in the in the included here. So I wonder whether the presentation uh, was on the thesis, not on the paper. I, I'm a bit confused uh, because the paper is uh, is it doesn't uh, is not reflected in all the presentations. Excellent presentation that were that were done today by her. But let me just uh, uh, suggest to uh, uh, to her uh, uh, what would be more interesting uh, to, to reflect. What has happened now is you are saying that the technological convergence is now shaping a new economy. Now, what is this new economy? In other words, what we always think about is we have low income countries, all right, middle income countries and high income countries. Develop, developed, highly developed, all right, or less developed. Or when you have economy, you, have, you can have economic growth, but you may not have economic development. Yes, uh, by economic development, it means the change, uh, the impact is on the well-being of the people. That a lot of the people, also their life pattern, the uh, changes, the work world and everything changes. So I'm just interested uh, because we have, as uh, the previous uh, uh, commentator said, uh, we have co-evolution, we have uh, technology convergence, we have disruption. We have network linkages. And then if you notice in, uh, in all the that you did, you have all this now cross-sectional innovation system, technology innovation system, all right? Sectoral innovation system, regional, national, local. I mean, we're having so many variations. And I'm just wondering that what, what would be the best way to uh, do a conceptual framing? that actually is very, very, very solid and uh, uh, useful because we can't go on being divergent. I mean, diversified, but is there any way we can come up with some very good uh, variables that actually connect us so that when we are saying we want to enter into this new economy, what do we mean by that conceptually? What do we, what are the characteristics that are required in this new economy? It's, it, uh, what's different from it? In other words, from what was happening. Remember you, the economy uh, structure that we have is a capitalist economy. And some of us have been arguing in our lives to create a, a socialist economy. So since we have all these variations, I'm just simply saying to you, is there any chance on the conceptual framing on the theoretical side? Uh, earlier on, I, I mentioned the comment on the methodology. I'm now worried about the divergence I see in all these conceptual new things that are coming that actually disrupt us. So I like us to be connected and have a very clear understanding, clarity, so that we, so when we take action, 
we are based on something, a conceptual frame and a theoretical base foundation that actually makes us move further and, and really achieve something useful. So I'm just saying to the presenter that I like this reframing of all these conceptual variations that I have seen to come back and then really put them together. And that's just, uh, the, there are other points, but I think the most, this is the most, uh, I better say one, one point. So I, I need, need clarity on this. Thank you very much. But I really enjoyed it also, I did the presentation very much, more than the, the paper I read. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mamu, uh, for your comments. And I would now like to invite uh, Franco for his comments on the paper of Duigo, please. Thank you, Jana. I, I have to say that uh, I agree uh, with uh, uh, the conclusions of my brother, Mamo, uh, that uh, actually the presentation is much richer than, uh, uh, than the paper, you know, much richer, much, much more illustrative. And I, I'm impressed. It's a very impressive uh, presentation and very rich and I'd say very actual. We all think about the, the so-called fourth industrial revolution, how much uh, technological convergence or whatever takes place uh, across sectors, uh, uh, across the economy and so on. And so uh, it's, it's a very important theme, uh, the technological convergence and uh, key enabling technologies. And also it's a very important theme because uh, it addresses uh, the transformation of innovation systems. So transformation means dynamics, uh, uh, means co-evolution as something that you, you mentioned uh, both in your paper and in your presentation. <laughs> so I, I think uh, uh, your, your paper and presentation are important because, uh, uh, and I go back to what uh, 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 Danilo and Mamo were saying before, you, um, try to cut across uh, various uh, um, notion and dimension of innovation system, because you talk about the sectoral systems uh, when you talk about ICT and auto, but you also discuss about the impact on national systems. So in a sense, it's your theme is of course very much related to sectoral system, but also how these, these uh, com uh, technological convergence affect the national innovation system. So I find it uh, as a very cross-cutting, horizontal cross-cutting thing that is extremely, extremely important. Uh, what would be useful at the beginning, I like very much uh, the technological convergence and the key enabling technology. I mean, it's, it's a concept and I totally agree with you. You should uh, discuss uh, what is the difference between these concepts and the concept of general purpose technologies, which I think is more reductive. You know, my, my point of view, yours is broader, but I think it's very important. I mean, because you know that uh, uh, particular economists have discussed uh, the notion of general purpose technologies that cut across uh, various sectors that affect uh, 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 various sectors in various ways. I think a good discussion initial of, of why uh, uh, the notion of technological convergence uh, and key part and key enabling key enabling technologies are different from G general purpose technologies important. I find the three uh, very important aspects that I think uh, are very strong in your paper. First is the methodology. I really like uh, your. Uh, set of indicators, your battery of indicators, which is very different from uh, uh, the problems that uh, Claudia has addressed. She did not have indicators. I mean, given the fact that you are addressing such a uh, cross-cutting, very general <laughs> theme is, I mean, you have the, the luck. I mean, uh, you've been very good in collecting. I mean, you, 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 uh, the merit is yours. But you're so, to have so many indicators. And I think uh, they give you such a strength uh, uh, and a power to analyze 
the, uh, the changes that you want to analyze. But uh, I think maybe you should discuss more the link among these various indicators and if these indicators can be integrated or not. I mean, it's not just a list, but what is the indicators, what kind of information each indicator is giving you in terms of technological convergence. Because I think uh, this is a very powerful, really powerful aspect uh, of, of, of your research, you know, to have a, a battery of indicators that uh, try to address uh, uh, the issue of innovation system. We always complain that innovation system have so many dimensions that cannot be addressed uh, by one indicator. Okay, you have so many. So in a sense, try to see the uh, integration, the links, what kind of uh, relationship there is. The second aspect, which I think uh, is extremely important and comes out particularly in your presentation today, is uh, uh, you can do also with, the, with these indicators a very important impact, analysis of the impact of uh, technological convergence and key enabled technologies on the various innovation system, definitely sectoral systems as you do, but also national systems. And I just uh, want to mention uh, 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 an obvious uh, reference, Christopher Freeman. Christopher Freeman in his work, uh, historical work, has exactly done that, the impact of new technology on national innovation systems. So in a sense, uh, you, you can do the same discussing technological convergence on sectoral systems, uh, national systems, uh, regional systems, and see how important this has been because you can do that uh, with your indicators. You, I mean, I think I like very much, again, going back to the previous, uh, the previous point, I like very much uh, the fact that you have a battery of indicators that you can use uh, to address uh, uh, the, the, um, the theme of impact. And the last point uh, is uh, you don't stress it very much in, uh, in the presentation, but what you have been doing uh, uh, is very, very useful for policy. Policy, policy in a sense that, again, using in a, um, uh, a powerful way your indicators and what uh, uh, what you find how policies can support uh, uh, technological convergence uh, how policies can address uh, the issues of imbalances i mean when we talk about technological convergence we also talk about imbalances imbalances among several parts of the national system or regional system or sector system, how policies can be can address uh, these, these issues. Uh, and again, with the tools that you have and the indicators you have, you can, you can provide answers uh, uh, also at the empirical level for, for policy purpose that are very, very important. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much uh, to all of you, Danilo, uh, Mamo, and Franco. Uh, Duigo, uh, I would like to give you about five minutes to answer uh, the questions and comment on the comments that were made to then open the discussion to the general public. Okay. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the time constraint. I will be very uh, brief. And so I might not be answering all of the questions, but uh, also the paper is based on the extended abstract. So it didn't uh, involve many of the details that I also added uh, later on the presentation to uh, give a more um, a exact uh, preview of our uh, PhD thesis. Uh, also, I would like to send my PhD thesis to the uh, discussants uh, for uh, getting their more uh, valuable, very valuable uh, comments. We are on the process of uh, developing our article over uh, my patient thesis, uh, but uh, it didn't um, uh, finish or finalize, so I couldn't uh, send it to you, uh, but I can uh, totally share my uh, thesis with love that. Um, thank you very much, uh, all of the uh, valuable comments coming from you. Uh, of course, coalition regarding um, convergence is, was uh, our focus. So uh, we had uh, some uh, excluding points from the divergence literature, but uh, more focusing on the convergence literature. 
uh, but we are uh, mentioning the uh, relevant parts of these uh, literatures in the uh, literature review. And uh, industrial path, um, of course, is changing. And I'm focusing on that because uh, the proposed model and the concept does not only focus on the convergent sectors or the major uh, stages of the convergence, but the process of the changes of the dynamics of the sectors uh, based on the convergence and uh, based on the um, other trends uh, can be involved, but our focus was convergence. Uh, so a further analysis can be done uh, regarding the, for instance, focusing on the demand side uh, uh, of the convergence can be done and other uh, key findings can be observed. Uh, these uh, can uh, include in the further analysis part. And, um, and also, Dr. Machi uh, said the paper was the uh, different and the presentation was the excellent. Uh, uh, as I explained, uh, I couldn't uh, involve all of the details in the uh, extended abstract. Uh, so uh, the difference uh, by the developed and developing uh, economies, I also uh, made the a country based and private sector company based uh, analysis based on the market data uh, for the market convergence, a quantitative analysis of market convergence. And uh, mostly this uh, trend is uh, on the um, developed countries, but not developing countries. There is a, there is a difference uh, from uh, their context. And uh, I've also suggested that uh, conducting the proposed model and the and the method uh, in their specific context uh, by uh, each developed and uh, each um, developing country would be a, a great, uh, would uh, bring a great perspective for the uh, um, model that we're proposing. Um, of course, the uh, we also uh, consider it the um, um, negative sides of the convergence because it is a uh, very disruptive but it can also be uh, all positively and negatively but we are uh, focusing on the positive and and our observations and the results of the uh, quantitative analysis mostly showed um, positive um, sides of or uh, impacts of the convergence but we are mentioning the uh, this uh, point uh, in the thesis uh, we are uh, suggesting that uh, uh, cross-sectoral data can be uh, developed uh, for a better um, uh, analysis, quantitative analysis, and also qualitative analysis. Also, uh, I, I was suggesting uh, in that while choosing the sectors, uh, we should don't be uh, disregarding the path dependency of the uh, uh, sectors. Uh, and uh, we should include uh, uh, our indicators for um, observing uh, uh, um, the effects of the path dependency, but in the analysis, it might affect our um, uh, results. Uh, we were uh, discussing while uh, developing the thesis, if we are getting these results that uh, because of uh, we have chosen or we have selected the automotive and ICT sectors for the case study of if, or uh, if they are uh, these are the results that uh, since we are using the global uh, data uh, they are uh, neutral uh, results so uh, we have we didn't uh, dis uh, integrate it or disregarded the, the uh, pet dependency also um, we are suggesting that uh, integrating different approaches, as we have done here, the innovation system approaches and convergence um, methods, uh, measuring convergence method is very useful because we have to bring holistic approaches to the uh, systemic, uh, to observe systemic dynamics. And uh, lastly, um, uh, what is the difference uh, between general purpose technologies and uh, key enabling technologies? It's a very uh, crucial point that we also discussed uh, because ICT is uh, choosing the uh, sectors uh, for the case study. ICT uh, also confront as the general purpose technology, but we have used the scope of the sector here. We have used the all technological uh, 
keywords uh, to determine the scope of the ICT. So we have used the, uh, not the technology part, but the sector scope based on the technology part. And the, uh, one of the differences between the CATS and the general purpose technology is, is that uh, CATS are uh, more emerging technologies and um, more dynamically uh, evolve. But the general purpose technologies uh, become more uh, major technologies that we can define them as the general purpose technologies. Uh, also, they can be defined as the, uh, as the sectors uh, by themselves, uh, as in the uh, example of ICT. Uh, so uh, there is a, a big difference, uh, of course, as um, Professor Mayerba uh, stated. And uh, um, I think it, this, this was all uh, the questions. Yeah. And I also, uh, again, thank you very much for, for your very, very valuable uh, comment for, my, uh, for our research. And uh, I hope we, we will be in uh, contact as well. Uh, I would like to have your further comments uh, based on my uh, thesis. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> No, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Doigo, for your wonderful presentation, which show again that early scholars can do a lot of interesting things. Uh, and thank you, uh, Natalia, Danilo, Franco, and Mamu for the comments. Uh, I now open the floor for uh, comments, questions from the general public. In the chat, uh, there has been a, uh, there have been two questions uh, directed towards Claudia. Uh, the first from from, from uh, Justina on, uh, Onuma. Uh, she says, "Great presentation, Claudia. My question is to you and other senior scholars here." When I decided to use the innovation system concept in my PhD work, there was this debate about whether it is a theoretical or a conceptual framework. The latter was mostly supported, but I can see Claudia using the IS as a theoretical framework. Can we say it can be used as both a theoretical and conceptual framework? Maybe any one of you, uh, both the presenters, but also our commentators, would like to comment on that question by Justina. Claudia, maybe. Yes. Um, uh, if you allow me, I would like to comment on the two questions I have written here. Um, Absolutely. Well, first of all, uh, yes. Thank you. Um, the first one, I think uh, the technological innovation system approach that I used uh, was very useful as an analytical tool for me because when reading a theory or listening so, to other lectures uh, that we had here, for example, in Bolivia, um, uh, we always hear uh, um, that we need to do something, but we don't know how to do it. So, um, like uh, um, getting into this, uh, for example, uh, specificities of the innovation system, such as uh, structure or functions, I think is useful to to embed the theory on practice. I I um, understand it can be a bit confusing, but. Um, as a general comment, now that I have explored the functions that are carried out within innovation systems, I believe that it will be very worthwhile to dedicate entire, entire papers to each function because of the particularities and the learning that we can obtain from each case. So, um, and then the question about universities. Um, within the public universities here in Bolivia, we are at an, a very early stage of building local capacity for research um, in the area of renewable energy, for example. And consequently, uh, knowledge requirements are not directed towards uh, local universities yet. So we would like to take advantage of this to see how we can really contribute to issues of national interest from the beginning. And on the other hand, I think it is a great opportunity to start building communication channels between the university and the other sectors or actors that we have identified in this work through this analysis. 
I believe innovation studies um, and this type of analysis, such as the one I presented in the paper, can be integrated quite well with other uh, techno-economic analysis to enhance the diffusion of new technologies. And that is one of the objectives that we have here at the Energy Research Center. Um, also, I read a very interesting work done in Africa, uh, which is quite related to the work I presented, and I would like to get in touch to discuss, uh, to discuss it in uh, more detail. In fact, uh, we cite many of these papers in our own, so uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Claudia. Uh, to the audience, whoever is from Africa and researches uh, on what Claudia does, uh, please get in touch with her. Uh, I see the hand lifted uh, by Bengt Ake and Danilo. Please Bengt Ake first and then Danilo. I'm not so uh, sure that uh, this distinction between uh, conceptual and theoretical is uh, extremely useful. I mean, uh, it's obvious that all the innovation systems, uh, uh, they are built on uh, concepts uh, which have been developed uh, in empirical research in innovation studies. And um, I would say uh, they are all what I would call evolutionary uh, uh, theoretical uh, 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 frameworks. Uh, and, and I think some of this debate goes back to Edquist, and I could see there's another question on that. Uh, the idea that you should have some kind of uh, mechanical uh, causality model uh, at the core of everything that you call a theory. I think that's uh, a methodological mistake. Perhaps Franco could comment on that. I, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, evolutionary theorizing in natural science uh, where you do not at all have this kind of uh, simple causality uh, going on, uh, met, uh, where you have selection, uh, 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 diversity, and, and so on. So that was. Uh, uh, my comment to that. I, I would like just, if I may, uh, when I have the floor, uh, say a word to do, do it you um, on her work. I think it's extremely important as Franco was indicating because um, I think a lot of what's going on is, is related to your extremely complex uh, uh, conceptual framework. Um, but I, I think you, you should know that some of the most important insights in, in innovation uh, studies and innovation theory, um, they actually uh, come through historical uh, case studies. Uh, I think Franco indicated uh, the work by Chris Freeman. Uh, and, and I would love to see uh, uh, you and others look into uh, how the tech giants uh, interact with automobile producers in developing uh, new types of intelligent vehicles, etc. Uh, and, and as far as I know, uh, you will find, I, I've seen recent uh, analysis showing that you will find different uh, modes of interaction uh, in, in, for instance, United States and China. Uh, in United States, uh, the tech giants uh, more go for themselves uh, to develop new types of vehicles by you have much more mixed uh, uh, collaboration patterns in China. I just uh, mentioned this, if, if, uh, if there was this kind of, of uh, uh, and, and you should, you would need to use other type of other things than data in, in the narrow sense. You would like need to do uh, a combination of methods, interviewing surveys, etc., and and so on. But I think that would be uh, uh, the most effective way 
to test uh, uh, your your complex framework and perhaps to reduce complexity somewhat as well to find out what are the crucial dimension of what's going on. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, may I reflect on uh, Professor Lundwald's point of view? Because sure, unless uh, Danilo, do you will you yeah. comment on the same thing? No, no, you, you can you okay, can go Okay, then go ahead. Yes, please. Yeah, of course. Please. Also, I can share uh, some of the uh, outcomes from the quantitative analysis of our mar market convergence analysis. And here we analyze the uh, countries and the private sector companies, mm -hmm. as I mentioned uh, in the presentation. But I couldn't show the uh, many of the <laughs> outcomes okay. in the thesis. Uh, I, so uh, you can see how uh, these uh, determined and analyzed countries uh, in the bibliometric analysis. I've also uh, determined the top countries and affiliations, and I've used the global uh, indexes, such as Global Innovation Index or their R&D mm -hmm. expenditures, mm -hmm. uh, to select and determine the um, countries and the companies, and I've selected uh, 10 from, uh, uh, five from um, automotive sector and the five from uh, ICT sector, and a total of 10 countries and 10 co uh, companies. And uh, level of focus uh, metric shows that uh, how much uh, or these countries and the, and the uh, private sector companies are focusing on the cross-sectoral a dynamics regarding the automotive and ICT sectors and how these shifts are uh, changing because in the thesis we also mentioned uh, our observed results as uh, in the uh, countryside we have observed uh, changes in the national innovation system dynamics that we have included and in the uh, company side we have observed uh, uh, sector innovation <laughs> sectors dynamics are changing. So we have also mentioned these in the thesis. I can also send you my thesis as well uh, to have these comments. Uh, and also I have made some uh, mapping analysis using the results of the uh, market convergence uh, uh, quantitative analysis. Uh, so you can see how these uh, countries are here uh, focusing on which uh, type of uh, sub-technology areas uh, regarding the automotive and ICT uh, sectors and what is their direction of the uh, automotive and ICT cross-sectoral convergence. For instance, some of the countries are uh, more focusing on dig digitalization and ICT sectors while others are also focusing on both. So these uh, changes are also reflected in our uh, results. And level of focus uh, via research documents show that which uh, cross-sectoral strategies or products are projects uh, or um, international collaborations are made between these countries. And uh, also uh, same uh, results are mapped for the uh, companies. And this shows a, a broader view because we can also see uh, other uh, related companies and subsidies for the companies uh, in the cross-sectoral uh, perspective. Uh, so uh, we have uh, made uh, this uh, type okay. of uh, mapping analysis as well. If, if uh, uh, when, when can we read your question? When can we read about all this? Yeah, in, in my thesis. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I so, will. I can there you share go. I would the, suggest the send link it. maybe. Yeah, exactly. I can maybe uh, share the uh, link uh, in the chat now. Okay. <laughs> yes, okay. I would love to have the further uh, comments. So thank you. Thank you very much. So Danilo, you have raised your hand and I see uh, Franco has raised his hand as well. So we will go in the order. Danilo, please. Okay, thank you, Jana. Well, my comments actually is to Claudia. First of all, uh, Claudia, I really enjoyed your presentation. I really enjoyed your your, your, I mean, I read the extended abstract and it was quite interesting. And I, my comments is, like, is uh, regarding like the situation in which we see many other Latin American countries as well. I mean, I'm working with the National System of Innovation like in Paraguay and it, it is quite a challenge because it, it's the kind of similar situation as Bolivia and there is not that many uh, works that have been focused on, on this specific country. Uh, so we have to kind of create the things uh, ourselves to see how it, how it works. And, 
one challenge that you raised uh, so well in your, in, your, in your work is the challenge of creating national systems of innovation and not only as we conceptualize theoretically, but under certain institutional conditions that ends up putting in the DNA of these, these, these systems a very particular way of behaving that creates some challenge for its future development. And this challenge is not only just like reorganizing this specific part, it's on, definitely on the DNA, it's really hard to, to reshape those. So um, I re really uh, ask you, please, to, if you can send the, the paper later, uh, the complete paper, because I, I really wanna, wanna read it. And I think it would be very useful, not only to the case of Bolivia, but to, to the case of Paraguay for sure, and to many other, uh, the, Latin American countries that are in quite a similar situation, I imagine in Africa and in Asia as well. So, so th thanks for the work and it was really, really nice and congratulations. Thank you, Danilo. Uh, Franco, please. Yeah, I want to uh, stress what Ben, ben Toke just said. I, I'm, I'm totally in agreement with him. It doesn't make that much sense to separate conceptual and theoretical. The innovation system approach is a conceptual framework with strong theoretical uh, point, which are not, however, kind of deterministic kind of theorems uh, in, in physics-like uh, uh, way. Uh, and uh, it's very much close to evolutionary theory. I think that the connection between evolutionary theory uh, an innovation system, the learning and capability building and the system, uh, uh, um, which is, you know, the interactive system is, is quite, uh, is, with firms and actors and so on, I think is a very, very strong conceptual and theoretical uh, uh, approach. Um, what distinguish the innovation system and evolutionary theory from other approaches is that it is empirically based in a sense, all the, let's say, conceptual uh, or let's say theoretical statements are based on strong evidence-based or empirically based analysis. They are, I would say bottom up, not top down. You don't come with a model and say, okay, I want to, but they're bottom up from cases, from analysis. And the second thing is they are dynamic. Dynamic, uh, and not, uh, but when you bring in uh, dynamics in terms of evolutionary approaches. You may have different trajectories, you may have different paths, you have uncertainty playing a role. So in a sense, uh, I, would, uh, I, would, uh, I would say that uh, the view of, uh, of the innovation system approach is a strong uh, evolutionary plus system and capability building uh, uh, approach uh, that is not is not deterministic and therefore I, I I would say that this distinction is quite blurred the distinction between conceptual and theoretical. Thank you so much uh, for your clarification. I think that helps us out. Um, with this, I would like to close uh, with some last comments. The first one, of course, uh, thank you to all the presenter and commentators. It has been a wonderful session where I'm sure we have learned all a lot about innovation systems and how to apply theory and the concept to, uh, to the practice, to practical uh, work. Um, um, I would also like to mention, as I said, this is a series, so we will have a uh, fourth seminar uh, within two weeks. Uh, please check out our webpage. It's uh, chris um, dash, uh, org, um, uh, Chris is org. Uh, I will put it in the chat. And finally, I would like to give uh, the word to Susan Cossin because uh, they are also organizing uh, um, a seminar for uh, junior researchers uh, in the NALIX um, uh, organization, which is um, like a local organization of the Globalix network, uh, Susan. Uh, so you can have the announcement when it will take place. Sure. Um, it, the newest chapter of Globalix is NACLIX, North American Caribbean. Um, network on learning, innovation, and competence building systems. We were just approved about two weeks ago by the Global X Board and are delighted with that. And we do, in addition to um, occasional um, 
lectures or presentations from senior scholars. We also have a junior scholar series, which is structured very much like this one it is. And in fact, our first presentation is today in about two hours. But the easiest way for you to um, get registered for that, if you're interested, is to go to NACLICS.org. That's N-A-C-L-I-C-S dot O-R-G. And you will find an announcement out there. And um, we will uh, look forward to, to seeing you there. You can also get on our email list from there. Thank you, Hannah, for calling on us. Thank you all. And thank you uh, also for uh, those organizations who have supported us in setting up um, this seminar series and hope to see you uh, in two weeks with our fourth uh, version of this seminar series, presenting two uh, different junior scholars. Thank you all for your attendance. Have a wonderful afternoon, day, uh, evening, whatever, wherever you are. Okay. Thank you, Jana, for your uh, great coordination. Okay. Thank you to all. Eh? Bye bye. Uh, thank you. And, and, thank, uh, you. thank you very much. I Thanks, think African, uh, African scholars who worked on this Claudia subject should send uh, contact her and uh, interact and discuss with her. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Yes, please. Oh, there's one of thank them. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you too, bro. Great. Okay, bye bye okay. from me. Okay. Bye. bye. Okay, bye Have bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Raresh, uh, do we just leave or how does it work now? Uh, I can close it. Uh, yeah, I can close it. I can end the session. Okay. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful sharing and I like uh, today's event very much. Congratulations yes. to you and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, Claudia. Yes, thank you, Claudia. Fantastic in the presentations. Fantastic, we are looking forward. absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Great presentation, great presentation and great sharing. Thank you so much. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. 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 All the best.